حب الدنيا رأس كل خطيئة it is the mother cause of all evil what is love of this dunya the mother cause of all evil is dunya look at greed look at miseriness covetousness look at selfishness look at pride and arrogance look at murder all of these are related to the love of the dunya that we have in our hearts and I tried to compile a list of the destructive elements consequences of having dunya in your heart say for example a person who is always apprehensive he has no sukun no no sabah no patience dunya dunya a person who always thinks about dunya is always thinking about how can I amass more and more wealth to the extent that if you look at the statistics there are so many people living in the western world where we have everything but they are deprived of the thing which gives them sukun which is sleep they have insomnia they can't sleep at night they are dependent on sleeping tablets the sleeping pills they cannot have peace at night why because they think the be all and end all of everything is the dunya work like robots 9 to 5 9 to 5 7 days a week so 5 days a week let's do extra time even weekends all throughout the year all throughout our life look at the phase that we go through we are a child in our childhood we go to school then we move on to secondary school then we move on to college all education for what purpose inshallah if we have praiseworthy intention all of this inshallah will be an act of worship so that at the end I graduate as a I graduate as a doctor as an engineer as an accountant as a lawyer which is all good if you have the good intentions so at the end of, at the age of 18 you finish college then you go to university for four years for five years then at the age of 23 24 whatever do you graduate as a qualified doctor scientist whatever and then all throughout your entire life until the age of 65 I think they've extended the pension age 70 maybe you are working we are all working like robots 9 till 5 9 till 5 every single day without fail but is there something more to do with this life in this world than just dunya yes absolutely in this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we have not created the jinn or mankind but only for my worship but I'm not saying here let's forget everything what I'm saying to you is change your intentions have the dunya in your hands not in your heart don't lose your sleep over the dunya money if you look at the word dhahab, which means gold, dhahaba also in the Arabic language is a verb to mean to go. He went. So the amazing thing is, dhahab is known as dhahab because it comes one day and goes. So don't keep the dunya in your heart. Another thing, greed and avarice. People have their bank balances, but they still want more and more and more. A person's got alhamdulillah a house and a car, but then they look at other people who are better off, who are high, higher than them in terms of affluence of wealth, and they get greed in their hearts. Hassan. Well, they are not content. Whereas the Prophet said, specifically in one hadith, the Prophet said, in terms of the dunya, look at people lower than you, people who are deprived of even the basics. For example, the poor people in Africa who have to go miles on end to get water and even that's not clean for them to drink. And here, alhamdulillah, we have everything on our plate. We wake up in the morning. If you're feeling cold, you have the radiators on. If you're feeling warm, you can have turn the fans on, AC on. You have everything at your ease, at your fingertips. Everything, food, clothing. 
But still you want more and more and more and more. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu If the son of Adam had one valley of gold, one valley of gold, which can suffice for not only his himself for his entire lifetime, for hundreds of people for their, for their lifetimes. But the Prophet Sallallahu said he would then have this greed to acquire another valley of gold. When he acquires the second one, he said, I want a third one. Then the fourth. And at the end, the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing will satiate him, nothing will fill him, only the dust within which, the rubble within which he shall be buried, which is the grave. And then, Allah Akbar, not being happy. Okay? If you were to do a, a, a survey of people who are in this, in this country, working nine to five, have a good job, Ask them how happy you are from a, from a scale of 0 to 10, most probably they'll say 0. If they had an option to say minus, it would have been minus. Because remember, happiness is not with wealth. Happiness is when you are independent with your own self. You, you do not look towards the dunya through greed. But you are content, happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You do shukr of Allah. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you thank Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most definitely give you more. لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This is taqeed. I will give you more and more. But we don't do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always say to Allah, Allah give me more, more, more and more. For example, some parents say, Oh Allah, they make dua for their children. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give the treasures of Sayyidina Uthman al to my child. Not thinking that Sayyidina Usman al Ghani, yes, he had, alhamdulillah, he had a lot, of, a lot of wealth, but at the same time, he spent a lot for the sake of Islam. On one occasion in the Battle of Usra, Jaish al Usra, to prepare for the army in the Battle of Tabuk, the Prophet he appealed to the people whoever prepares the army for the Battle of Tabuk. Inshallah, for him is a guaranteed place in Jannah. Uthman ibn Affan stands up and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu Upon me is a hundred camels, all with, uh, with their saddles, with everything, with all the wealth and the possessions and the armaments, everything, a hundred camels from me. Then after a short while, the Prophet sallallahu stood up again and said, whoever prepares the army, for the Battle of Tabuk, for him is Jannah, Usman al-Ghani then stands up again and says, Alayya, mi'ata ba'iri, bi'ahlasiha waqtabi, upon me is 200 camels, in addition to the 100 that he already gave. So that's 300. The third time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi appealed, Uthman ibn Affan says, Alayya, thalathu mi'ati ba'iri, I will give 300 camels in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all laden with their saddles, with all the equipment that one needs, to go into the battlefield. And then at that point, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَانَ مَا فَعْلَ بَعْدَ هَذَا Whatever Uthman does after this, it will not harm. He is forgiven, he, is, he has been guaranteed a place in Jannah. These were the people. And then the other thing that the dunya gives, the, the additions of the dunya is, that you become displeased with what Allah has decreed for you. You ask questions. You criticize and object to Allah's decree. Oh Allah, why did you give me? Why am I only given an X amount of wealth that I can buy a Toyota Corolla? Why has that person been given so much money that he can buy a Ferrari? Plus another Beamer, and a Mercedes, and the Audi that's parked in the garage that never comes out, and which he never uses. Aridha bil qada is one of the greatest stations of wilayah. Being happy with what Allah has decreed for you. But when you have dunya in your heart, this is what you keep on thinking. Negative thoughts. Having negative thoughts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then obviously, it then leads on to jealousy, enmity, miserliness, selfishness. Hoarding, amassing wealth, desires and shahwa, murder, killing people because of the dunya. There's so many reports that we've 
listened to, heard on the news with regards brothers quarreling with regards pieces of land. In this dunya, especially I'm talking about Gujarat here in India. There is this sudden boom in the economy where they are selling pieces of land. Their forefathers cultivated that land. They worked day in, day out with their blood and sweat in order to earn a halal income. Now the next generations are taking benefit. They sat on their sofas. The government wants, wants to buy their pieces of land and they are giving ridiculous amounts of money to buy those pieces of land. But what's happening because of this? Brothers who used to love one another, who used to share one plate when they used to eat food, used to be under one roof together, used to care for one another, used to give preference to the other before themselves, they are now fighting one another. In some extreme cases, even killing one another. Just for the sake of the dunya. This is what the Prophet ﷺ warned us. If you look at the hadith which talks about the potence of the hour, the Prophet ﷺ said, the river Euphrates, which runs from Iraq to, through Syria, a very holy river it is, the Euphrates, it will spout forth deposits, deposits of gold. There will be gold that will come out from the river Euphrates. But the Prophet says, wonders, don't take anything from it. Don't take anything from it. There will be people who will kill their own brothers for the sake of getting the gold from the river Euphrates. Because of the good.